Okay. So why would it not be strange for him to come out empty-handed? According to the court record, of course. Oh, because he left the tray here. He left the tray and the glass in the bottle here. That's probably what I would say. I hope. We'll see. Objection! Yes, okay. Mr. Powers. Yes? You're easily influenced by other people's words, aren't you? As soon as you heard that bellboy might have been the killer, you got caught up in believing it must be true. But, but, isn't he really suspicious? He's got all those stitches and, and... So, a baseball is stitches. Are you saying all baseballs are suspicious because they have stitches? Well, uh, there's also, I mean, uh, what about him being empty-handed? I would like to ask the court to please take a look here. This is the crime scene. There's a wine glass sitting next to Mr. Karita's body. The liquid inside this glass is tomato juice. And now, if you would look at what is on top of the table, in the lower right corner here, anyone can clearly see that it is a tray with a bottle of tomato juice on it. The bellboy had just brought this to Mr. Corita's room. He left the tray in the room, which is why he was empty-handed when he left. Ah, but that would mean that the bellboy had seen and left a dead body in the room. Ah, but can you prove that Mr. Corita was already dead at the time? Oh, uh, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? I blame you for leading me down this route. ha. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Oh, what is with him? Why is he laughing? Witness, isn't there one more thing you would like to share with us? I is there? The bellboy was empty-handed. Or should I say empty hand Ed? I recall you had something interesting to say about his hands. Oh, yeah! I almost forgot. Huh? What? That bellboy... Oh, I thought you were going to say he had no hands. How did he bring it? He had to, he had to like, tightly grasp everything with his wrists. He was wearing gloves. Gloves? Yeah, pitch black leather ones. All the other bellboys don't wear gloves like that, right? Black leather gloves. Why didn't you mention them earlier? Sorry, it slipped my mind. Ah, boy, does this make my bellboy look really suspicious. All right, got to focus. Can't get lax here. So what if he had gloves? A lot of bellboys wear gloves. Come on, Mr. Wright. That bellboy was wearing black leather ones. So, a football is made of leather. And it has stitches. Uh, maybe, actually, does it? Probably. Are you saying that all footballs are suspicious because they're made of leather? Go. But that man, he received a large roll of cash from the defendant. And then he was seen leaving the crime scene wearing black leather gloves. I don't think that even someone like myself can believe he was just another bellboy. Uh, it seems that we have finally come to an understanding. Now then, witness, please continue with the rest of your testimony. The rest? Oh, yes, please, tell us more. Okay. Their second meeting. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. He gave something to the person inside the room. Then the old guy just left without even going into the room. After that, I went to the bathroom, and then back to my seat. 
So, the bellboy, after leaving the crime scene, next went to the defendant's room. Yeah, I kind of saw all that by accident. Some accident? I'd say you saw too much. And all of it was suspicious to high heaven. Hmm. I think it's safe to say that we can no longer consider this bellboy to be normal. Now then, let's get started, shall we? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. After leaving Juan's room, the bellboy went and knocked on Matt's door, just like that. Is that what you saw while you were busy spying? Excuse me? I may be a poor, underpaid action star, but even I wouldn't stoop to spying. Well, I think the point is, where did you watch all this from, Mr. Powers? Oh, uh, from the door of the bathroom with my left eye in it. Sort of sneaky spy like. I knew he was spying. Please, does it really matter if he was doing it over or underhandedly? What did the bellboy do next? That's all I care to know. He gave something to the person inside the room. I said, hold it. Uh, okay. That's better. Ahem. What kind of statement is that? Please elaborate. Give us a few more details. Preferably detailed details. Oh, um, okay. Huh. Should probably ask him only one question at a time. The person inside. So who took this something the bellboy handed off? Uh, actually, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. Only an arm? Then you're saying you didn't see the person's face? Yeah. Well, it was Mr. and God's room, correct? So it could have only been Mr. and God himself, I'd say. And then, what did the bellboy do after that? Oh, so after he gave the person inside the room the thing... We might have to go back and press that again. Or twice. Then the old guy just left without even going to the room. Where did this bellboy go after he left Mr. Ingard's room? Hmm. He opened the door to Viola Hall. Went in there, and who knows after that, right? Ugh, I do. After that, I went to the bathroom and then back to my seat. Did you see anything strange, suspicious, or just out of the ordinary at that time? Oh yeah, I saw that one thing. What? He saw something else? There was this jittery alien with a ray gun. He was watching Juan's door like some sort of stalker. Um, I, I think we can forget about the alien. Well, Mr. Power's testimony just now was just as vague as his first. It's a little troublesome, isn't it? But I'm sure if you press him enough, everything will become clearer. Although, that just makes it harder on us, doesn't it? Ugh, talk about a lose-lose situation. Alright. It's this one, yeah. Okay. I said hold it. <laughs> Alright, ask about this something. He gave something to this person? Yeah. And what was this something? Ha ha ha. If I remembered what it was, I wouldn't be calling it a something, would I? But this implies that something was removed from the scene of the crime. Are you sure you really can't remember, Mr. Powers? Um, I think it was something kind of small. I would like to summarize the testimony up to this point, if you don't mind. When the bellboy left the crime scene, he immediately went to the defendant's room. There, he handed a small item of some sort to the person inside. As for the person who received the item, all you could see was the person's arm. Yes, yes. It was just like that. Mr. Edgeworth, is all this really that important? Of course, Your Honor. I think this is of the utmost importance. 
This is when whatever was removed from the crime scene was handed over to the client. Hmm. Mr. Powers, please try to remember what it was the bellboy handed off. Um, well, let's see. Hmm, I think it was... no. If you remember, please add it to your testimony. Yes, sir. If I saw it again, I could say for sure, but I think it was some sort of wooden statue. A statue? Yeah, it kind of looked like one, I guess. If I saw the actual thing again, I'd probably remember, you know? Looks like for this trial to proceed, I'm going to have to come up with whatever this statue thing is and show it to him. You're going to have to trust your instinct on this one and take a chance, Phoenix. Well, Mr. Powers, let's continue with our testimony. What did the bellboy do after that? Okay. So what would have been like a small wooden statuesque thing? Probably this wooden bear, I would guess. Wasn't there one more statement here to present? Yeah. I don't know if it'll give us anything, but let's press it as well. I mean, we gotta we gotta role play holding out as long as possible, right? So don't ask anything. I don't think I can find out much more from Mr. Powers. I should probably move on to a different topic. So what did the bellboy... Okay. Yeah, so hold it. What did the bellboy do after that? All right. Let's present this bear. What was the point of that pregnant pause? Where did that objection come from? <laughs> I like that Phoenix Wright just objects to things and he just waits. Every time, just to drag it on as long as possible. Where did that objection come from? Well, speak up. Uh, it, it was me, Your Honor. What is it, Phoenix? I have a feeling that something bad is going to happen once I show this. Mr. Wright, if you have something to say, please spit it out. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Phoenix. Deep breath. Mr. Powers, there's something you saw. Was it this item? Oh, hey, that's it. That's the something. Wow, Mr. Wright, you really figured it out. Hmm, I recall we found this at Mountain Guard's mansion. At the defendant's house. What does this mean? It's simple, Your Honor. We killed the Ingard. Silly the Killer assassinated Juan Carita in his room. And then he stole this wooden bear from the scene of the crime. And then the bear being found in Mr. Ingard's mansion would mean... It goes without saying, Your Honor. Mr. Matt Ingard is the killer's client. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Wright, this is the most unfortunate turn of events for you. Y yeah. Sorry, Mia. No, it's all right. Your judgment was sound. Actually, I figured the bear would come up. If not now, then it would have later on. Even if you hadn't shown it to the court, I'm sure your friend Edgeworth would have. Ah, I almost forgot. He knew about it, too. Hmm. I think it is clear that there's no need for us to continue this trial. I can't let this happen. I have to do something. There has to be something we've overlooked. Your Honor, a minute, please. Yes, Mr. Wright? There are still a few points left that we have not fully explored. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can have that. All right, Mr. Wright. What question or point would you like to explore further? Powers' testimony. Mr. Powers' testimony, of course. Huh? I know. Uh, something shaky. You're in. You're in. An an in an in how do you say that? Anity. Inanity. Stupefies me, Mr. Wright. We have already clarified all questionable points during the cross-examination just now. Er, 
wasting time like this, calling the testimony questionable. I'd say it's your head that's questionable here. Oh, 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 oh. Good one, Phoenix. Oh, that was a bad one, actually. Ah! Yes, I agree. The cross-examination went smoothly, and there was nothing wrong with the testimony. Now then, I believe... Please, wait. You are being very persistent today. Because I can't let it end like this. I know my outburst just now was a little questionable. Questionable indeed. But... There really are some questionable points left to discuss, Your Honor. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? The bear itself. I think it's fairly obvious that the bear itself is very questionable. Bear, Mr. Wright. This was found at Mr. Engard's mansion. However, Mr. Engard was arrested at the hotel that night. Which means that since the murder occurred, he has not had a chance to go home. Oh! I think Your Honor has already figured out what I'm trying to say. It's not possible that it was Mr. Engard who took this bear to his mansion. Indeed! Why, that's very true! We didn't consider that point, Mr. Wright. There was no way, time-wise, for the defendant to have taken this bear home. Ooh, disaster averted. It... You haven't gotten the best of me yet, Mr. Wright. Huh? I remember it clear as day. I remember what you muttered to yourself at Guard's Mansion. We have this area completely surrounded. There's no way for him to escape. I can't believe it. That butler. All this time he was D-Killer. D-Killer and Engard were working together, so to speak. And D-Killer was hiding at Mr. Engard's mansion as its butler. What a bold move. The bear figurine was brought back to Engard mansion by D-Killer himself. When it looked like he was about to be arrested, Engard had him do so. Why doesn't he have the stitches here? I assume because it would have been bad if the police found it dur oh, during their investigation. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you've been quiet for a while now. This is too much. Isn't there anything I can attack at all? I have to try. I have to find something else. What will you do now, Mr. Wright? Do you plan to... I plan to expose a clearly shaky place in Mr. Power's testimony. What? There's still another one! There is indeed, Your Honor. And it's quite a questionable point. What are you trying to pull? Oh, well, we can't have that. All right, Mr. Wright, what questionable point would you like to explore further? The person who received the bear. Sorry, it's a little early in the morning for me still. There's one thing in Mr. Power's testimony that was very unclear. And that is the identity of the person who received the bear. He gave something to the person inside the room. I'm sorry, but I only saw the person's arm. As long as we don't know who it was that took the bear. We can't be sure- Ah! What is it, Mr. Powers? If you're going to scream like that, then at least give us a good reason why. Oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, so I remembered. Um, I remembered who took the bear. What? Really? I mean, I only saw his arm. But, but, the arm. It was the Nickel Samurai's arm. I swear it. You've got to be kidding. Are you sure of that, Mr. Powers? Yeah, I'm sure it was the Nickel Samurai. Order, order. It looks like you've dug your own grave. 
And again. How many times is that today? I've lost count. So the person who took in this little bear was the Nickel Samurai. And, as we all know, Mountain Guard is the Nickel Samurai. Thanks to the defense, we've made it all the clearer. I think we've heard enough. We now know why this bear figurine was at the defendant's mansion. As well as who it was that received the bear from the assassin in the room. Everything has become very clear. The client who hired the assassin to commit the murder was Mr. Matt and Guard. I see no reason for this trial to continue. Therefore, I will now hand down my verdict. Thank you, Your Honor, for your understanding. You see, Mr. Wright, you could not win against the truth, could you? I knew it would turn out this way. After all, what Edgeworth has stated is the truth. Any last objections, Mr. Wright? Well, do I... What should I do? Uh, objection. I will know! Objection! <laughs> There's only one way for me to drag this trial out. The only thing I have left is this one dirty trick. Your Honor, right now we have these two reasons to believe my client is the assassin's client. Reason number one. He accepted the bear figurine from the assassin. Reason number two. That very same figurine was found at Nguard Mansion. However... It's possible this is all the work of a certain other person. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, it's possible a different person is the killer's real client. The real client? Yes. Tisk tisk. Is this all you have? Now then, Mr. Wright, let's hear your theory. Who do you say is the killer's real client and therefore the real murderer? Uh... Uh... Take that! You have let me down, Mr. Wright. Huh? I know you're aware of the truth. And you are free to turn your eyes from it. But at least try to make some sense while you're doing so. I'll give you another chance. Don't squander it. Okay. So I need to actually figure out the right thing. Hold on. I'm pulling up the guide. Okay. Gotcha. That would be uh, Adrian Andrews, which is actually not that far of a stretch, to be honest. Adrian Andrews! Oh yeah, and while I'm at it, since my points are so low right now, let's save. Just as a, a backup, you know? Just in case. Yes, we already know that she tried to frame Mountain Guard for the crime. By wearing a spare Nickel Samurai costume. Ah! And then the Nickel Samurai's arm that I saw. That could have very well been Miss Andrews. What about Mr. Engard? If you would please recall yesterday's testimony. She looks really grumpy here. The defendant was taking a nap during the break period. That's right! Then, finding this figure at Mr. Engard's mansion... It was a well-laid trap set by Miss Andrews. Mr. Edgeworth, what is your opinion on this? I can't even begin to count the flaws in the defense's logic. Besides which, there's no evidence to support it. However, I can't fully discount its possibility either. Hmm. What is with this trial? Come on, anyone can tell in God, did it? Oh, wait, there's the, there's the crowd. I can't believe the defense would go so far as to pin the guilt on someone else. Yeah, unbelievable. It's not something petty, it's murder of all things. This is to save Maya. 
This is to save Maya. Even if the whole world turns against me, this is one fight I can't give up on. Order, order, order! All disruptive parties will be forced to leave the courtroom. Your Honor. For the benefit of the defense, I'm willing to play along with his what-if game. His what-if game, Mr. Edgeworth? The prosecution is prepared to challenge the defense's theory. Mr. Wright, even you must have a thought. It's strange and wondered, why would the criminal want this little wooden bear? He's right. The killer did specially bring that bear to in guard right away. Why do you ask? Is there something special about it? Absolutely. And I'm sure that once the court knows its significance, the true killer's identity will become crystal clear. Your Honor, the prosecution calls upon a witness who will clear all doubts against Miss Andrews. And who would that be? It's quite simple, Your Honor. The Batman, Miss Andrew Adrian Andrews herself. I see. Well then, the court will take a short ten minute recess. The prosecution will prepare its witness in that time. Yes, Your Honor. All right, the strategy of wasting a whole lot of time is working wonderfully right now. Okay, sorry, I'm just looking at the uh, the guide real quick to get an idea of how much longer. I think we're about halfway. <laughs> oh, I knew it was a good idea to hold her hostage. Don't you agree, Mr. Lawyer? I never thought in your desperation you'd try to pin the guilt onto Adrian. Ah... Uh, I swear this demon will pay. Mr. Nick. Pearls? Where's Mia? I... I don't know. A really strong power suddenly called her away. A really strong power? Oh, Mr. Nick, your phone is... It's from Gumshoe. How's it going? Have you been hanging in there, pal? Yeah, sort of. We just barely found something to latch onto. Whew. That's a good pal. And what about you? Anything yet? Have you figured out where D Killer and Maya are? Uh, we still don't have any leads, but what? We don't have any more time. If we just had one, even a single clue would be really helpful. I was only able to come this far because I kept thinking to myself. I've got to keep the trial going until Maya's been rescued. But have I just run out of luck this time? Is all her hope for naught? A tent. Huh? A tent? I could see a circus tent. Mia? It looks like Maya was unconscious until just a few minutes ago. As soon as she woke up, she called for me. So it was Maya that called you away. She's locked in a dusty little room right now. But I could see a circus tent outside the window about 300 feet away. Gumshoe! Is there a circus in town right now? There's only one, pal. The very big circus. May is somewhere within a 300 foot radius of the main tent. What? Okay, hold on a second, pal. Hey, draw a circle on that map. About a 300 foot radius from the main tent. Hurry! And? And? I could see a mailbox under the window, just outside. Gumshoe, there's also a mailbox. It's, it's 300 feet away as well. Okay, what else? What else, Mia? I'm sorry, but it was a very small window. I couldn't see anything else. It felt like I was in an old office building. Maybe the third floor or so. I heard her. An old office building. Good stuff, pal. Okay, just hang in there. Just a little longer, pal. Wish us luck. Good luck. I'll call you later, so don't let your battery die, okay, pal? Mia. Mia's not hurt, right? She's in a pretty bad state, Phoenix. She's being starved. Gumshoe, please hurry. Looks like we're out of time. Are you all right, Phoenix? It's only a matter of time before Mia's rescued. I can do this. I just have to make this trial last a little longer.